Hey everyone, this is Brian, and in this part of the course, we'll be diving into the wonderful world of core data. Now, no matter what type of application you work on, you probably will run into the need for persisting data. Sometimes this might be a case where you need to persist just a few bits of information, such as, say, a couple of user settings. Or it could be that your application requires saving huge amounts of data, so you need a full-fledged data persistence mechanism. Or, well, it could be a somewhere between both of those two extremes. Now, if you simply need to save a few bits of information, you could always use the built-in iOS user default system. In fact, some developers use this for saving more than the occasional bits of data, though we would not recommend you doing that. If you need a more flexible and robust data persistence mechanism, you again have a few different, a few different options, such as using SQLite, a custom data management system like Realm, or even Apple's own core data. Each of these options has their own advantages and, well, they have their own drawbacks as well. However, core data as a solution that is bundled in with iOS is something that every developer should pay some attention to. At least know enough to know if this is something that they want to use in, your, in their application or not. Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. What is core data? Well, Apple positions core data as an object graph management system. And what the heck does that mean? Well, rather than being a simple database for storing data, Apple sees core data as a way to store your application objects and to persist their state information. But if it helps, you can think of it as a database, but be warned if you come from a database background, this can result in some issues in understanding how you would work with core data if you persist with the following database uh, paradigm. Okay, so let's get back to the object graph of things. You're probably wondering, how does this work? Well, all iOS apps use objects to represent elements in the app, like a view, view controllers, UI elements, etc. In addition to these, there are probably other objects which represent the data model in your application. For example, in an address book application, each contact might be represented by an object. Going further, each, content, each contact might encapsulate other additional objects. For example, several address objects represent a particular contact's home address, work address, and etc. Now, say that your address book application has several contacts added to it. This data is represented by several of your contact objects. While your UI is created by your code, so will, so will be recreated by the code in your application the next time you run it. Your data, unless it was persisted, would be lost when you exited your application. So core data provides a way for you to persist your contact objects as objects that can be immediately reused in your application when they are reloaded. To reiterate, when you save data to a normal database, you have to retrieve the data and then load it into your application object in order to use it in your application. With core data, you save the object itself and then reload it so that you can keep using the object. Now, the big question is, why should you use core data? Well, core data historically has a reputation for being a bit cumbersome and somewhat complex to use. Perhaps because of this, in recent times, other third-party solutions have cropped up which try to improve upon core data. Now, either due to the emergence of these solutions or because they themselves came to understand the complexity of working with core data, Apple seems to have recently begun to revamp and streamline core data. Tasks that took a lot of boilerplate code previously has become has suddenly become just a couple of lines of code. So this is a good time to get in on learning core data. Additionally, being a first party framework, core data has some inherent advantages. First, there are tools built into Xcode and instruments for developing using core data. Next, it's a multi-platform solution available on both iOS and macOS. It can easily scale up to gigabytes of data, and it's optimized to use memory efficiently. Our aim here is to give you an overview of core data so that you can understand how easy or difficult it is to work with it. Once you've done that, you can perhaps take a look at some of our other tutorials on data persistence to see which particular approach works best for you. After all, 
each person's requirements are going to be different. Now, throughout this series, you'll be presented with a bunch of challenges. The challenges will take what you have learned and apply your knowledge in a real world situation. So whatever you do, do not skip over them. Consider them requirements. If you get stuck, our challenge videos will walk you through the solutions. So give them your best shot. Okay, with all of that said, let's dive into core data. Core data is fun, complex, and well, a little scary, but don't worry, we got you covered. To be notified about future core data videos and well, everything in between, hit that sub button and then give the notification bell a ring. We'd certainly appreciate it. See you in the next one.